Oh, good morning. Top of the morning to you. So today I'm doodling around with a new toy. This is the uh, Kenwood TS50. But uh, we're not going to talk about the TS50. We're going to talk about uh, what I've got dialed up here. What I've got dialed up here is WWVB is in Baker. WWVB is a time signal that's generated from the National Institute of Time, or Standards and Time, pardon me. Oh, so much for my advertising from those folks. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so this signal is actually on the low frequency range of the of the RF band. It's quite a bit below the standard broadcast band or medium wave band. If you think of uh, your AM car radio, whatever the last time you turned that on is, uh, 500 kilohertz is the low end of that, and this is far below that. This is only 60 kilohertz. So it's a long ways down there. The signal generated by WWVB is uh, kind of a binary signal, and it takes a minute for it to stream by. Every second that goes by, a new data bit is generated and there are only four excuse me three types of data bits they're measured in microseconds and there's one that's 200 microseconds one that's 500 microseconds and one that's 800 microseconds the 200 microsecond bit or duration is a zero the 500 is a, a one and the 800 is a what they call a mark so if you sit and watch this for a minute you'll hear all the stream go by and the this is how those uh, clocks self-setting clocks or these uh, watches that use the WWVB signal work and what I've done here is just dialed it up and I'm using the CW function on the TS50 here to listen to it in the beginning the end and the beginning of the time frame is started by an 800 milliseconds pulse so you'll hear kind of two quick blips and we're pretty close here we got about another 15 20 seconds here and about 10 seconds about five seconds isn't this fun so get ready right there it was kind of the blip blip so now we started the beginning of the next time frame the sequence inside there inside the data frame um, is uh, probably easily as easiest easiest we um, decoded or looked at with one of today's clock chips and there's a number of different ones that uh, decode this but you could build a receiver and do this on your own you can go to the National Bureau of Standards and, and de, uh, obtain the information to see how this is all put together. It's very interesting. Another kind of little interesting factoid is that the, the little blips, the beginning of the blip, or probably lack of tone in this case, is the beginning of a second, mark of the second. So it's kind of interesting. So that's how they do the seconds. They can't stream the data fast enough to line up the seconds, but they can stream it fast enough to line up the minutes. Some other information that's in there is like what daylight savings time is, whether they're going to uh, implement a leap year or have a leap second or some other stuff. You can hear this on other modes, but it makes it a little more difficult. Like here, here's FM. But all you hear is the carrier. Here's AM. But all you hear is kind of a buzz. The carrier is actually there constantly, and to modulate it, they reduce it by 17 dB, if I remember correctly. Okay, dokie, I just thought I'd show you that. There's a lot of interesting things on low band, and this is one of them that's there pretty constantly. So kind of in the next installment of this series, we'll look at one of the WWV decoder chips. We'll talk to you later. Until then, have a groovy day. Take it easy.